she just thanks her God, thanks God every day. You know, she says, mm-hmm. I'm a diamond. I'm scared every day. I'm losing you. And mm-hmm. I said, that's all part of being feminine. That's called, that's the most feminine part of you. And I yeah. want all the women to hear this. And there's an easy solution to start connecting with your female side. That's not in any of my books yet. I have to write another book for it. Mm-hmm. But it works so, so well. And it works for all my clients. I just haven't written in a book. And it's the it's the reassurance process. Okay, now the reassurance process, yeah, put a context of first, we're going to understand why this helps. And then we're going to actually see how to do it. Mm-hmm. So what you just described is the part of you that needs a man, doesn't just like a man, but needs, I need as a woman, I'm being you, to feel I can share my deepest fears. I can share all my feelings. I can share my mistakes. I can share everything inside. That's called vulnerability. I'm going to reveal to my partner what I don't reveal to anybody else. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the thing that, quote, strong women or women on the male side are not going to reveal in the workplace is their feelings of, am I good enough? Mm-hmm. See, that's why you're, you're, I can do, you know, as I can do. That's your male side. Welcome to my podcast, I Think I Can. My intention for the podcast is for individuals to begin a transformational journey towards self-awareness and self-actualization. And I do this by telling my own story, as well as all the stories from my past clients. And I do this so that you too can feel safe knowing that change is available to you, but also so you can take more responsibility for your life in three specific ways, in your health, your self, and your wealth. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, welcome back, everyone, to I Think I Can podcast. Today, I have a repeat offender, John Gray, and I don't think I need to, um, well, unless you've been living underneath a rock, sometimes I say, I think most of you out there know John. He's the author of many books, but the most known book is uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Um, and yeah, the, the, the last one, the most recent one was, I think, published in 2020, John. I'm not sure, but it's Mars, Venus, beyond Mars and Venus. Yes. 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 After that, but I mainly focus on beyond Mars and Venus because that is helps us address the challenges for women and men having relationships in the modern world where women are more independent and how that affects men and how that affects their relationship. Mm. How they can understand a new way of relating to each other. Mm, yeah, I love that. And we're we're gonna dive right into that. Um, but just first, I mean, I, I don't think the stats in terms of you know marriages breaking up breaking up have um been going down at all. I'm I'm not even sure if they've gone up, but regardless, I was wondering if I could they've first doubled, they've doubled. It's and doubled. They're... Because you have twice as many people who are now choosing not to be in relationships or who are single. So there's twice as many single people in the population of the Western world than just 20 years ago. Uh, Mm. So and if people are not choosing to be in relationships, it's because their relationships haven't been working or Mm -hmm. or in some cases, their parents relationship just was disaster. And so they go, I have no confidence or any skills to make it work. And when there's something that we really uh, like or want and we can't have it, then we stop wanting it in many cases. True. uh, Yeah. Stop stable that my mother told me when I was just a little child, we're reading those stories and it's the the called the, it's called sour grapes. It's the Fox who wants the grapes. Can't really, really wants those grapes. Imagine that fantasize it gets to the grapes, but there's a fence and he can't get over it. Tries many, many times. Finally couldn't get the grapes. He walks away, sour grapes. I don't really care about those grapes anyway. It's not important to me. And while it's a simple children's story, it's profound wisdom of what's happened today it is because women, first of all, women could not get the respect they needed in the world. Mm-hmm. When women could not get the respect they need, then they said, well, who's getting the respect? Well, men are, rich people are. So I need to be independent like a man and, mm-hmm. and get the respect that I deserve. 
And we don't respect femininity in our world today. It's completely, we want to empower women to be like men. Hey, as long as you're like a man, uh, you get, you get uh, kudos and mm-hmm. the respect. But actually, as far as hormonally and energetically, when you respect someone, you increase their estrogen and women need 10 to 20 times more estrogen than men. If I respect you, I do things for you. When I when I follow the speed limit on the street, uh, except the speed limit, which is 10 miles over the regular speed limit, you know, when, I, when I drive that way, what am I doing? I'm respecting my community. I'm respecting the law. I'm respecting mm-hmm. others. It means when I curtail what I think I should do or what I want to do for others, that's called respect. And women give massive, you know, it's nonsense. Women don't respect men. It's men don't respect women, but men only don't respect women primarily because our culture doesn't. Our culture doesn't Mm -hmm. value masculinity. And when men, when masculinity is not valued, what happens is men become more like females. It's it's just a, if you can't be who you are, you become what you're not. When you don't Mm -hmm. feel safe being who you are, then it's easy to become what you're not. It's always easy to fall off the cliff rather than stay on the cliff or stay on the tightrope. You know, staying on the tightrope is being real and authentic and directed at who you are. You're on the tightrope. If the wind blows, you tend to fall off. And for men, when they fall off being their true self, they become feminine. When women fall off of being feminine, they become masculine. And this is what's happened today. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're going to, folks, we're going to get into more of that male and female energetics because it has been um, spoken about a lot more now, even since I interviewed John um, over a year and a half ago. And you can check out that, that first episode. I think it was, yeah, one of my first 10 interviews I did on my podcast. So, but if I just want to ask this first, like, do you think for young couples, like their, their reason for breaking up is different than let's say, um, you know, the, the gray divorces right now, would you say that there's a big difference or there there's more similarities than differences. And when I say young couples, I'm, I'm talking zero to 15 years, you know, usually if you can make it past that 15 year mark. I feel like you, you got some traction on the road, but um, do you think there's much differences? Um, in my experience, uh, mm-hmm. there's always going to be some exceptions, anything I say, yeah. that mind. but we're talking, I've, I've helped millions of people in person, not all in my counseling room, but in workshops in 22 different countries that I've traveled over the last 50 years and working with people. And I work with people on stage. And what you see is when you work with issues, you say, how many people relate to that? They all raise their hand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, sometimes uh, you have to go a little deeper for people to relate to things because uh, we're all mm-hmm. kind of lost. If you're not happy and fulfilled in your life, you're lost. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you really need. You, you have a, a skewed bias towards what's not real. So let's just be clear about that is that anytime mm-hmm. you're in a state of fight or flight, you're not seeing reality. Mm-hmm. Reality is wonderful. And so, and, and, you know, there's horrible things, but how you're reacting, are you exaggerating it? Are you can't keep yourself from feeling love as you keep yourself from, you know, negativity pervades our life for women, particularly overwhelm, not enough, just the feeling, not enough, not enough, not enough. Now the podcast name is, is what's tell me the name of your podcast. Can I think, I think I can, I think I can. I, can. I, can. I love, I think I can. Well, that's the, that's actually the, the best message for a man. Not that it's mm-hmm. not a good message for women, but everything about a man masculinity is, I think I can. And matter of mm-hmm. fact, I know I can. And I can do my best and my best is good enough. That is the power of masculinity. It doesn't get upset about stuff. If I was just masculine, then nothing would ever bother me at all. But I also have female hormones. Every man has female hormones. But when a man is in a stress state, his female hormones are too high and his testosterone, the male hormone is too low for his normal state that you can measure when he's feeling good. And if you're feeling romantic, his testosterone levels will generally double. And for a woman, we know biologically, because we've tested women with biological, is when a woman's estrogen levels double, she wants to have sex with a man. Mm. Now, there's two ways for your estrogen levels to d- double. One is to be in danger and feel a man is protecting you. And so you're in danger and a man's protecting you. Uh, it can actually, some women are actually immediately turned on to dangerous men. Because mm. as long as I say yes to whatever he says, he'll protect me. 
So that's the dysfunctional aspect of the male-female relationship is marrying dysfunctional men, marrying men that are just not capable of giving you what you need, but you get turned on to them. This is a woman's mm-hmm. problem. I address mm-hmm. these problems, of course. Then there's the other one, which is if a woman feels safe mm-hmm. and how she can depend on a man, her estrogen levels will go to high levels and then she'll want to have sex. Because I'm talking to women who, as they get older, they don't want sex so much. And then there's some women who, as they get older, they want sex, but only primarily because their partner doesn't want to give it to them. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, you yeah, know, it's true. Man wants sex. He's desiring you. He's so a woman just goes, yeah, we're not having sex. Why aren't we having sex? Well, honey, you rejected me enough. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I don't care about it anymore. And now you care about it. And, mm-hmm. and biologically, biologically, as women get older, they're naturally, if they've grown in wisdom, they their hormones will start to balance. And if they haven't grown in wisdom, their hormone, their testosterone will start to become much higher as their body naturally loses its estrogen. See, that's the challenge for women. When you can't make babies anymore, you're not automatically having to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas when you can make babies, you have to be careful who you have sex with and who you relate to. Well, now you're, you can't make babies. So another part of you says, well, if I can't get it, I'll do it myself. Sour grapes. It's very easy to go from feeling, well, I can't trust my partner. I'll just do it myself. When actually what would produce way more estrogen from her adrenal gland, Mm -hmm. when you say, I'll do it myself, you're, you're, you're stressing out your body Mm -hmm. saying I can do it myself to get my partner to do it for me. Mm -hmm. What he does for me is good enough. And Mm -hmm. what he has done for me, I greatly am grateful for and appreciate Mm -hmm. what you're doing there is generating huge amounts of estrogen. So you can have great sex. And why I talk about great sex is because a lot of women, as they get older, they're not interested in sex anymore. And men are, are as well. Uh, you know, my men's group, they, they, you know, varied responses because they don't get erections in the morning. You know, I'm 72 years old almost every day because of what I create in a relationship, which is polarity. With my wife, I make sure she's more feminine than me. And I do that by being more masculine than her. Mm-hmm. And to be more masculine means I'm actually de- to a great extent, I, you know, I'm not a perfect person. There have my moments, but I know what to do at those moments. So I come back to being the great person I am. And for a man, what that means is almost detachment all the time. Now, people don't understand what detachment is because they don't know what detachment is. If you're detached, it's the opposite of indifference. See, I'm not indifferent to you at all. I'm totally detached. I'm doing my best and my best is good enough. That's detachment. I'm not needing you or depending on you to for my sense of self-worth. Mm-hmm. I depend on you to feel even better, but not mm-hmm. for my self-worth. I'm content in my life. I learned that at 28 years old. I mean, because I had a, a I don't know, good situations in my life. I became a monk for nine years mm-hmm. and learned to find within myself wholeness. Okay. I am a mm-hmm. complete person, but I can become happier <laughs> mm-hmm. if, having, if I have a woman in my life and I have children in my life. Mm-hmm job that helps people mm. See, that mm-hmm. makes me happier but we all have to start from i'm i'm whole within myself and i can yeah. become more of who i am by interacting with others and we absolutely you know, so much talk today is about hormones what's not talked about is your hormones go low let's take hormones yeah it's, you know, it's not crazy because some people get benefit from it some people don't it's like uh, just even the advent of the birth control pill, which is estrogen and progesterone inhibits your natural process of wanting a man in your life. Mm-hmm. When estrogen goes up, you want to have sex with a man. Mm-hmm. You're attracted to men. Mm-hmm. When you're as higher you go, a woman is attracted to a man. If her estrogen can't go that high, she can't be attracted to a man. So let's say a woman can't be attracted to a man. What's going to happen is something in her life over and over has prevented her from having high estrogen levels, which is very easy. All you have to have is a dysfunctional father and you can become gay uh, just like that. So many women tell me, you know, it's, it's you know, I, I don't trust men. I don't trust men. So I'm just with a woman. Being with a woman will raise your estrogen levels up. Being with a man will knock it higher. It's mm-hmm. just, it's just, this is the reality. When you feel I can depend on someone, uh, to make a baby. When you depend on somebody to make a baby, your estrogen levels shoot up. This is just biology. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So how about like, so what robs a woman, a woman of her estrogen, you know, besides menopause is like, I mean, there's so many things, but I, wh- what do you think about like, you, because when you were talking about, okay, what are the things that women 
need or what what makes them a, more attracted to men? What raises their estrogen? You said the 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 protection, like they feel safe um, that this man will fight for them. Um, I think another one would be a man being a provider or will work for them. And yes. how correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then how about how about financial? Like, do you see, like, do you see a lot of like drops into testosterone? I mean, estrogen, like, I mean, or attraction related to like bickering about, like, I, I think money can really become a huge wedge between a couple. Probably one of the biggest problems. Yeah. The other one is different child, child rearing approaches. That's a, a yeah. big, uh, there's, but money is huge. Money is, security. Now mm-hmm. when we talked about men being protectors, we're talking about providing security. Yeah. You now have the government for security. So you're married to the government if you're a woman today to a certain extent. You have the police. You can always call the police. You don't actually need a man. You have an alarm system in your house. Now you're very feminine. So you also know I like to have a big guy next to me. That's good. No doubt mm-hmm. about it. That's still there. But it's not the primary concern for women. It's not going to stimulate a lot of estrogen when you do have security systems, when you have police, when you have a government. You've just lost a huge chunk of what women have had for thousands of years, why they loved men. is because True. you didn't you didn't have a government. If you go to China, when I've, I've spent many years in India and China and all these various places and studied their cultures and so forth, women there, historically, out, there'd be one man and there'd be many wives. That was very natural and normal. Women were happy with that. I didn't need to have monogamy. Actually, and the man, the women would go to the strongest man for this greater protection and they want to have babies with the strongest man. So they have children. And with children, the reason they wanted boy children, it wasn't discrimination between boys and girls. It was boy children could battle. It was more physical world. Mm-hmm. So you had your own army. So this is, it, this, it blew my mind, you know, why? Why have so many wives? I'm very happy with one. No, Mm -hmm. you want more children. So you have an army to protect yourself because Mm -hmm. other families would come and steal what you have. This Mm -hmm. is real. And they would Mm -hmm. take take the girls. You know, this is is an uncivilized world. So we tried to civilize it by creating, okay, we at least have our protection. Well, you don't need that now. So that's one thing. So let's say you're a woman and you're and biologically, when you need security and someone provides security, this creates estrogen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you need estrogen to make babies. You also need estrogen for well-being. If you don't make estrogen, your body says, get rid of you. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, what, what value do you have if you can't make babies? Now, the reality here is you don't have to age so much at menopause. At menopause, you don't have your eggs. You ran out of eggs, but you can still send a body, a message to your body that you can make those hormones. And st- then you have wisdom to give the children and everything your important part of community because you have high estrogen levels. They won't be as high as they were before, but they'll be high enough to give you orgasmic sex. Mm-hmm. And orgasmic sex, if you can't have orgasmic sex, you're gonna age, It's you're gonna have problems, you're not gonna be happy, things aren't gonna work for you. Orgasmic sex, and the reason I say this is so many women at 55, uh, they don't think they can enjoy sex anymore. And they don't enjoy sex because they're not making enough estrogen. And the reason they don't make es- enough estrogen to enjoy sex is because their adrenal gland is burnt out. Right. Exactly. Adrenal gland is burnt out because once the gay eggs are gone, your adrenal gland will make enough estrogen for you to have massive well-being and great mm-hmm. sex. And I have students who are in, in their late seventies. I don't have any eighties yet, but they'll get there and they're having great sex because they have a husband who knows how to provide great sex for a woman. And mm-hmm. this is, it takes man and a woman to do this. Now you might think, well, how do I get a man to do this stuff for, for me? The things I recommend. And that is the biggest estrogen producer is when women let go of their immature childhood beliefs that if a man loves me, he'll automatically do things. <laughs> This is ridiculous, okay? But it, what, the, the big estrogen producer is the confidence of your male side to go, I have the power. I'm a can-do woman. I can get him to do whatever I want for me. Mm-hmm. See, it's a reverse thing. It's not I can do it all myself. That's just stress out. Mm-hmm. But what I can do for myself is motivate my husband to do what I need in order for me to feel I don't have to do it myself. Mm-hmm. So it's rather than the goal being I can do everything, the goal yeah. is I can get others to do things for me. Mm-hmm. And your- how? Sorry, how would you con- like? How would you 
coach or um, provide advice to a woman who wants to have her man do more things for her? Like, for example, it's not, it's not the nagging that doesn't work. Um, but like, because I think what you're saying there, it's, well, this let's is explore, not, why doesn't nagging work? Why does not nagging work? Because nagging sounds like, um, he's being mothering and he doesn't want to be mothered. He, that's, that's, right. that's he, why. yeah. Why else yeah. does nagging not work? Because, um, after a while it's just you zone out like i mean it's just the same old same old same old um these are all good descriptions i'm not questioning it i'm not looking for the mm-hmm. perfect it's just mm-hmm. good for women to hear have a discussion about why nagging doesn't work because they keep, yeah. nagging. They keep yeah. nagging so yeah. why why do you keep doing why well, it doesn't work now i'll tell mm-hmm. you why because they don't know any other way to get what they want mm-hmm. yeah we're on the line they 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 don't i don't know how to get more so i complain Okay. Right. I remind you what you didn't do mm-hmm. and you should do and you didn't do. Mm-hmm. And why don't you remember? And what's wrong mm-hmm. with you? Well, those are all messages that are negative. Yeah. You have men negative messages. And what is a negative message to a man? A negative because you're doing it because you love him, you do care about him. Like mm-hmm. you said, or like a mother, which is a real turnoff to men and to women. Mm-hmm. So what you're trying to do is how do I get more from him? And mm-hmm. you have a role model of the way you do it is every complaint is just a request. Yeah. And I have to make a request that actually works. A mm-hmm. complaint, every complaint is a request. You know, you didn't turn out the light. How many times do I have to tell you? Oh, you disappointed me again. Anytime mm-hmm. you give a negative message to a man, you knock down his masculinity and you knock down his masculinity. He loses all the instinctive motivation he had in the beginning. So mm-hmm. what happened to that man who knelt before you, respected you, wanted to please you, was motivated? Where did where'd that motivation go? It went because in his own life, he didn't do things that increase his testosterone, which is motivation and desire mm-hmm. and setting goals. He'd stop that in his own life. But more importantly, maybe he has it in his own life. He feels good in his job, but he comes home and he has a nagging wife. Mm-hmm. He has an unhappy wife. All it takes is just be unhappy. And mm-hmm. if a man doesn't intuitively, if he takes it personally, like I failed you, his yeah. testosterone will go down. Now, yeah. it doesn't, my wife's not happy all the time. It doesn't matter to me because I'm the plumber. I'm not the painter in the house. Okay. She, if I'm a plumber, I know that doesn't make sense. It's a fun story. I'm going to use it. If I'm a plumber and I come fixing your plumbing and you're saying, look at my walls, you know, they, they look so terrible, you know, it's, it's stained and whatever, you know, it's not, doesn't look pretty. I just hear you. There's no reaction. I empathize. I'm detached, but I go, yeah, you need to get a good painter. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to react to it. Men have to learn you're not responsible for her happiness. Right. Not, yeah. I don't depend on her happiness for me to be happy. I depend on her becoming more happy. That's where mm-hmm. I get kudos. But if she's yeah. not happy, okay. I'm not, the, you're complaining about the wall. I'm not, the, but see, men take it on. They think, oh, I have the power to make you happy because we do. When you're happy, we can make you much happier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or if you're unhappy and you need something from us, then we can make you happier without a doubt. But here we come back to the original question you're bringing up. What do women need? They needed security. And then then what you need at their security, provide for me. And particularly the biology says, my whole biological reality is to make babies. Okay, that's, a, mm-hmm. you know, the race will die. Evolution stops if you don't make babies. The, our civilization is dying right now because women can't make babies. Mm-hmm. 30, 30%, 40% in various places are infertile. Our mm-hmm. lifestyles making women infertile. Our lifestyles causing women not to have, want, not to want to have a marriage, not to make mm-hmm. commitment, not to want a man to commit to her. It's kind of like, how, why should I want a man to commit? None of them want to commit. 30% of men today do not want to be in a committed relationship. They just want to play. Mm-hmm. This is men on their female side. The female energy wants to play, have fun, mm-hmm. do what you like to do, do what you love to do. No responsibility at all. So when men have high estrogen and we all have estrogen. Estrogen is love, it's happiness and joy. If I'm if I'm eating sugar as a as a male, <laughs> well, sugar is different because it gives a spike of dopamine. But if I'm doing what I enjoy doing, let's say I, I need to do this interview as my work. And I'd rather just go for a walk with my dog. I'd rather play a video game. I'd rather do some porn. What that is, that's me on my female side. It's me not doing what I'm responsible to do. Mm-hmm. Then after I worked hard, I can come home and play my video game or whatever it is, or I can mm-hmm. stay with my wife. I can go to my female side. Mm-hmm. Then 
need to address their male side first, then their female side. It's priorities. It, yeah. it, women need to address their female side first, and then yeah. they get to their male side. But if yeah. you're on your male side, and I encourage women, be on your male side. This is a whole person. You're both masculine and feminine, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. But when you're on your female side, I mean, so you go to your male side, make sure you're anchored in your female side. And at least when you go to your male side, make sure you're returning home to support you and situations that support you and being on your female side. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I was watching a YouTube of a YouTuber, a wonderful medical doctor woman. And she says, you know, I'm I'm boss woman. I'm the boss, you know, (laughs) I'm. And, and parentheses, I heard bitch woman, but <laughs> mm-hmm. boss woman, I, I'm boss woman at work. You know, I got people doing this. I'm not happy about that. They know how to treat me, you know, but when I come home, I have to change hats. Yeah, absolutely. I become yeah. wise and I be, mm-hmm. I don't give orders. I don't right. have that same attitude and, yeah. and I don't try to change him in any way and work. Mm-hmm. You got to change people. Well, Okay. There's also mm-hmm. better ways to be in the workplace because she's stressed out all the time, but at least she's moderating her stress mm-hmm. by knowing I'm coming home to this other hat that I can wear. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. ideally, if she's really integrated, when she's at work, she's also that that feminine woman who is mm-hmm. full of appreciation and doesn't nag, doesn't criticize, but is able to inspire and uplift. That's a, that's like a, a black belt in karate. We're just talking about brown belt, green belt, yellow belt here. Right. Let's try to find some lower your stress in your life. Mm-hmm. And I just happen to be black belt. So I, I know advanced techniques and medium techniques, but the bottom line is just simply understanding as a woman, most of anything that's upsetting you is because you're on your male side too much and not enough on your female side. Right. Too much anger built up, too much resentment. That's how I see well, a let's, lot let's of look women. Let's look at anger and resentment. Why do women get stuck in anger and resentment? Resentment's a little different from anger, but if you ask why you resent, resentful, mm-hmm. resentment is more of a, a concept of injustice. Right. You know, I give more, he doesn't give to me. It's more a head. If you're in there, resentment, talk about it. You'll just stay there. It's very head. Behind yeah. resentment is anger and hurt mm-hmm. and fear and not being seen. And, and all kinds of emotions are behind resentment. But we'll look at any of those negative emotions. Let's say women can actually, most women can't. If I say, what are you feeling? They'll give me what they're feeling thoughts. They don't mm-hmm. really go to, I'm feeling really angry. And I'm mm-hmm. angry because I thought he was going to do this and he didn't do this. And it's not fair. He didn't do this. And I'm angry. He said this. Anger is more raw. And when you feel anger, you have the potential to let it go. Resentment, you're just stuck in it forever. Mm-hmm. But you have to recognize. And, and also in, in resentment, you can analyze it and realize that you're not such a victim. If you have the understanding that you've been complaining all this time for your husband that you resent, you haven't been getting back what you give, but what you've been giving is not love. Right. You can't give love when you're feeling resentful. Men smell yeah. it. You know, you just yeah. give me a message. I'm not enough. How do you get rid of resentment? It's real. It's that you feel imbalanced. Mm-hmm. First of all, you don't realize this is the intellectual side of it. You don't realize how you're bringing out the worst in your partner. If you don't know that and you don't take responsibility for that. Then there's the res- resentment can't go away. But you say, yeah. oh, my husband's ignoring me. Well, what happens when when he is around you? <laughs> he gets he gets complaints. So where is he going to ignore you? So when, yes. you feel, when you feel that you're part of the problem and you can't feel you're part of the problem, for most women, when you don't understand men, you don't understand. And you and when you don't understand men and you resent, you're not loving. Imagine having to come home to a woman that doesn't love me, who thinks she loves you. You know, see, there's a difference of kinds of love. I care about him. I, 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 um, yeah, kind, you, you know, you're kind. Yeah, I, I, you care. Know. I don't want to hurt him. I care yeah. about him. I love him. I'm bonded with him, but that's, that's poison to a man. What mm-hmm. a man that's the kind of love. It's the kind of love women need. If I prioritize my wife, she's the only woman in my life. Mm-hmm. She's the most important woman in my life. I care about her and I empathize with her. That's an empathy and an understanding. I make excuses for her, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I validate her. I validate mm-hmm. her. And I, I make them more important than me. I do things even when they don't do things for me. Mm-hmm. If I do that for my wife, her estrogen shoots up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She becomes a happy woman. You do yeah. that for a man, his estrogen shoots up. Yeah. And he enjoys yeah. it, but his testosterone goes down. Mm-hmm. You're poisoning him with all of your codependence, worrying about him, trying to give him, giving him more than you get. The fact that a woman has resentment means to me that she's been giving more than he's giving her. And why is he, why is she giving more is already she feels I'm not getting enough. 
and I'll try to get more by giving. But what you, and that's not so bad. If your partner's ignoring you, give them something nice. That makes sense. But give them what they need in order to boost testosterone. If you give, you give them what what you give them what they need to produce estrogen, they like it. Make me a meal that produces estrogen. Take care of a man that produces estrogen. Why traditionally did women cook for men? Because all day long, men were in the jungle taking care of women, doing the things that allow women to feel secure and safe. So she felt so much appreciation for him doing what she couldn't do or didn't want to do. And he did it for her. When you have a job like that, women really appreciate you. So then she had appreciation for her, for him. And so what can I do for him? You'll never have resentment if you depend on a man for what's important to you. Women today, if they make money, we start with the whole money thing. Yeah. You got the security. He does things for you that you don't, so you don't have to do it all. Yeah. But any, any unhappy woman, she says, I have to do it all. <laughs> She's like, no, yeah. you don't. No, yeah. your, your skills re- put you into doing it all, or you won't ask. See, the whole dynamic is learn how to ask in a way where a man will respond and give to you. You can't just give, give, give and think he's going to give back. The truth yeah. is, he doesn't. When you, if you pay me for doing nothing, I will do more of nothing. Okay. If you ask for something and then pay me for it, I would be happy to do that. And then you ask for a little bit more and I'll, oh, I get even more. Then you respond mm-hmm. to that. And then, you know, some women will go, oh, that's too complicated. Uh, why do I have to do that? That's playing games. No, that's just that's common sense wisdom. When you understand men and women are different, you know, a man could say, why is my wife unhappy all the time? Why is she complaining all the time? What's the, why can't she relax and be happy? I'm fine. The house is a mess. No big deal. Nobody's coming over. What's her problem? Mm -hmm. We can do the same thing. We do the same thing. And then you're a stupid guy. She's not happy because she's not getting the primary needs that she has in order to make estrogen. And she says, well, I need that too. I said, well, if you're low in estrogen, that's good. But in typically when men start looking at what they need and what they want and what they like, it's their estrogen going up. But when a man looks at what you need and what you like, then his testosterone goes up and men need to make 10 times more. And some men need to make 20 times more testosterone than a woman makes in order to have well-being, in order to have romantic feelings. So let's let's recap. Um, Like there's a few things. And I I, you mentioned porn. I want to talk about that, but sort of in a different light. Um, you remen- you mentioned responsibility, which is something I really strongly emphasize in, in couples. Like, I mean, but like, so for each person to take their role and their responsibility in, you know, the relationship, um, not being the best, but like in terms of the cure, like when you talk about, you know, oh my gosh, like, you know, full of anger, full of resentment and, and he's not getting what he wants and she's not getting what her wants. I mean, what she wants, blah, blah, blah. Like the cure, if I'm, if you agree with me, is really connection. We need to connect on a deep level again. And it begins with, I think what you're saying is sort of like, you know, not saying this is what I need so much, but maybe like a, like a, a, like a, a way of breaking it like open is sort of like, you know, this is like problem solving, right? This is not, neither of us are happy for someone to just say, you know, what do you need from me that I'm not seeing or I'm not giving you? You know, it's just sort of that curiosity, right? It's sort of like, you okay, know, I like stop you there. People okay. don't know what they need. Women particularly don't know what they need. Men typically know a lot more when it comes to what they need. That's okay. why this is selfish. Oh, my husband's a narcissist. He happens to know what he needs. And but the university is saying he doesn't need that. What he needs is what you need. And he does. He doesn't understand what you need. And you, as a woman today, if you're having unhappiness, Mm -hmm. don't understand what you need because you no longer need a man for survival. You no longer need a man for security. You don't need him to do stuff for you. You're quite capable. And Mm -hmm. so what do you need a man for? You can't give a man what he needs if you don't need him. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. What do I need from a woman? What I really need from a woman is not for her to show caring for me, empathy for me, respecting me. No, that's not what I need. I need her to need me. 
And if because she can't love me unless she needs me. So what do women need men for? It's a big question today. So many women go, I don't really need him. You know, I, I can do it myself. I can do this myself. If he, he cleans the dishes, they're never good enough anyway. So I'll just do it myself. And, you know, he does this. He doesn't pick up after and say, well, I'll just do that myself. Instead of going and asking him to do it, asking him to help. Well, why don't you ask the help? No, well, I don't feel comfortable asking for help. I'm afraid. Yeah. No. I'm afraid he won't want to do it. And yes, he won't want to do it. So there's reality to that. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm tired. Just let the dishes be there. And then you have to have relationship skills, communication skills. I said, you know, just take five minutes. I'm going to do it anyway. But if you help me for five minutes, I'd love it. He'll give you five minutes. You can ask anything of a man to do in five minutes and start bringing out the best of him. You've already silenced his male energy. You know, I used to come home before I learned all this. I'm like ready to have sex with my wife. Even I'm feeling like king of the world. I'm doing my job. As soon as I walk in the house, nothing. I just want to sit on the couch, go to my cave. There's no energy at all for her. It's just, just being in that environment where I'm just not enough knocks the testosterone down. So we have mm -hmm. to take, it takes time to correct those. I did correct all of that. I have the skills. I know how to do it. My wife figured a lot of it out. So I mm -hmm. share with women those skills. I, I watched, wow, she just did that. It was amazing. Here's an mm -hmm. example. Because, you know, this concept, you need some practical. So, yeah. so here, here, big problem she had with me is he leaves the light on in the living room. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, one time, two times, no big deal. And it is no big deal that I leave the light on. What's the big deal if I leave the light on? Oh, so you walk through, you care about saving money, care about the environment, care about the light bulb, whatever. So you have your concern. I don't have that concern. Mm -hmm. You have your concern. So turn off the light switch. Is that a big deal? No. But somehow years pass where I don't turn out the light. In her mind, she creates a problem, which is if he won't do something little for me, how can mm -hmm. I trust him to do something big? Well, that's logical if you don't understand men. Men are eager to do big stuff because you get big reward. We're based on testosterone. The bigger the reward, the more testosterone. We don't care about little stuff. Mm -hmm. You care about little stuff all the time. You're worried about little, look at this little wrinkle. Look at this. It's just like mm -hmm. you're fanatic about that. I don't worry about wrinkles. Any other, well, society mm -hmm. says, why? Well, you know, you got reason for this. The reality is women are neurotic. They're always looking at themselves. They're critical of themselves. You know, mm -hmm. I see these big fat guys and they look at this muscle. I look great. You know, they look like shit, but they all mm -hmm. oh, looking great. You know, look at this muscle. It's a can do guy. See, this is what builds testosterone in men. But having said the big belly in men, any man with a big belly is going to be more prone to, to becoming angry, to being irritable, mm -hmm. becoming passive, becoming lazy, because big bellies produce a lot of estrogen. Yeah. Estrogen is not good for men. That's why you see men get fat as they get older. I do everything to keep my belly flat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very motivated for that. And no man boobs. <laughs> well, I couldn't help. A little bit of man boobs are there, just a little bit. And that's, it's no problem for me to have estrogen in my body as long mm -hmm. as I've got my muscles. Yeah, so I am very male, female. Okay, that's mm -hmm. how I can write these books ever since a little mm -hmm. boy. I know my mother, I connected with my mother and five brothers who wasn't mm -hmm. safe for me to be masculine. So I had to learn how to be powerful as a male. And mm -hmm. the first step of that is learning detachment. I became a celibate monk. Yeah. Best thing for masculinity is give up masturbation. Don't have sex with computers, with mannequins, you know, the doll. This is all insanity we've gotten to. And it always results in lowering testosterone. The average male today at any age has half the testosterone level, half of 50 years ago. This is mm. measured. This is because we can't mm. go back further than 50 years. We aren't measuring it. Mm -hmm. But if you go back further, it's much lower even then. Mm -hmm. They become domesticated as males. And it's all been a process as women do not need us. They don't know why they still need us. They just don't know. Any woman mm -hmm. who's feeling unhappy, she needs a man. And she well, doesn't I know that. She needs a man. I you know, know that. And, and John, but what do you need I, a man for? What do you need a man for? I, I was going to say, I, I need a man for the sheer reason for connection. I need to connect on a deep level with another human being that understands me, that I know has my back, that, you know, knows all my weaknesses, knows my strengths. And well, mainly like someone to have your back, no matter what, like that's the sheer deep connection for me is why I need a man. And you're so enlightened. Mm. That's Thank it. Thank you. You're yeah. so enlightened. Now, how many women are able to share their vulnerability in that way, to share their insecurities? Something that most women would agree with, but still very important, I need someone to have my back. 
uh, one of the challenges for women today is they're looking at men for all of that. It used to be that women believed in a higher power. The higher power always has your back. And we've become a secular yeah. society. And so you're you're alone in the world. Uh, and if you don't have, and, and some women are so not trusting a man, they can only feel the back, getting the back of a woman. And a woman can only raise your estrogen so far. It takes a man to knock it to the higher level where you can make a baby. See, if you, the whole biology is such that nature says to you, hey, if you can make a baby, we're going to make you feel really good. We're going to keep you around a long time. We're going to make your life wonderful if you can make a baby. And what it means to make a baby is you don't have to just get to ovulation to make a baby. Your body thinks you can make a baby if your estrogen goes really high. So this is where where you just revealed the doorway for women to make their estrogen go really high. What you just said. Now, historically, my mother didn't have to do that. My mother just had to depend on my father for money and for strength. If I boys, he's the policeman. She had a husband who was a policeman. She had a husband who could provide. And now the real big providing is money. We live in a world of money. But suddenly when women can make money, what do they need man for? When women get, you know, we had the big pandemic. And what we found out is for most people, if you just are not obese, you won't get sick. If you have vitamin D in your body, you won't get sick. Now, where they're saying, hey, everybody needs to go on a super weight loss plan here. We're going to create incentives, give you money for every pound you're losing. You know, we're going to spend billions of dollars. Just lose a pound and show us you did it and stay in your marriage. Okay. All these things that lower your stress level, raise your vitamin D levels, your immune system gets really strong. Did we do that? No. We want to give you some kind of treatment that you don't have to do anything. We're a bunch of lazy, ignorant people who are afraid all the time. And we're depending on the government. The mm-hmm. World Health Organization is supposed to control my health. Look at any of those people. They're all fat and ugly. You know, they're not happy. They're not fulfilled people. I, I can't say every one of them, but I see some of them and I look at their history of violence and various things. I'm not going to listen to those people. I'm going to no. listen to my, my me. I'm going to listen to mm-hmm. me, common sense. And mm-hmm. as a woman, you want to get to the highest level of hormonal balance. Mm-hmm. I'm depending on my man to provide emotional support. Mm-hmm. Where I can reveal the depths of who I am. My mother didn't have to reveal the depths of who she are because she plant, she produced enough estrogen just knowing that my dad's making the money and I get to be with my kids and fulfill my dream. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I have a community of women and I have God, I have all these other things producing estrogen. I just need a, a little extra estrogen from my husband, which is that male female relationship of man as provider, woman as receiver. And when a woman doesn't depend on a man for that, she loses a massive amount of estrogen, loses her ability to feel life is wonderful. Instead, she lives in a world of not enough, not not enough time, not Mm -hmm. enough money, not enough attention, not enough romance, not enough affection. And so what you get is massive people, and particularly younger generation, getting not even getting together, twice as many even getting married. And you've got even you've got married couples. It's pretty much the same on the first marriage around 50 percent. But then it goes up to 70 percent of failure. And then it goes up to 90 percent of failure on third. Oh my uh, God. Doesn't matter. And now for me, I was married before and made mistakes for two years. Ended that mm-hmm. married for 32 years, learned from my mistakes, got better and better, better than I outlived my wife. And then mm-hmm. now I'm in a relationship where it's, it's heaven. I mean, I've learned all those lessons and I can start yeah. fresh, but with all the knowledge I have, with no history of making mistakes, she just thanks her God, thanks God every day. You know, she says, mm-hmm. I'm a diamond. I'm scared every day. I'm losing you. And mm-hmm. I said, that's all part of being feminine. That's called, that's the most feminine part of you. And I yeah. want all the women to hear this. And there's an easy solution to start connecting with your female side. That's not in any of my books yet. I have to write another book for it. Mm-hmm. But it works so, so well. And it works for all my clients. I just haven't written in a book. And it's the it's the reassurance process. Okay, now the reassurance process, you put a context of first, we're going to understand why this helps, and then we're going to actually see how to do it. Mm -hmm. So what you just described is the part of you that needs a man, doesn't just like a man, but needs, I need as a woman, I'm being you, to feel I can share my deepest fears, I can share all my feelings, I can share my mistakes, I can share everything inside. That's called vulnerability. I'm going to reveal to my partner what I don't reveal to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the thing that, quote, strong women or women on the male side are not going to reveal in the workplace is their feelings of, am I good enough? Mm -hmm. 
that's why you're you're I can do, you know, as I can do. That's your male side. And you you want to have your male side. Look what I can do. In a marriage, my wife knows she has a strong male side. I can say things and my husband will do stuff for me. Not that I have to do everything. She does need to have her own job. She needs to have her own activities where she's not always depending on her husband. That's just one piece of life, but that's the dessert. That's the mm-hmm. that's the high estrogen. But you need to find your own foundation in estrogen. And as you mature as a woman, you need to have some place where I'm being rewarded for my service to others. And that mm-hmm. is, it, it could just be that if you're a philanthropist, it could just be, you know, you help people and they thank you, but that's your male side. You have to be doing something where you're needed by others. Now, historically, women had children and then they could be grandparents. You know, nobody's having children these days. So you don't get that. But you don't have to be making money if you got little grandchildren you're taking care of and you have a society mm-hmm. that respects femininity, which it doesn't today. But children are a big part of women developing their male side. Mm-hmm. See, when you're when you're when you're uh when you're a mother, and I'm not saying everybody has to be a mother, but if you're a mother, you are like the boss. You're the boss woman. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a masculine that. energy, right? It's a masculine Very, energy. That, it's it's actually the perfect energy. It's masculine mm-hmm. and feminine. Mm. See? The feminine energy is receptive when you, when you're, you're not raising your children in order to, to get something, it's all for them. But at the same time, what you're getting out of it is unconditional love. Mm-hmm. That's the highest form of love. I mean, just that your children, just you're, you're an angel. You're, you're a God. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I got my, my little, my, one of my daughters just had a baby and it's six months old now. Just people light up when they see that baby instantly mm-hmm. you get massive amounts of estrogen when you hold a baby okay mm-hmm. this is biological body the body is saying oh you're doing what you're designed to do take care mm-hmm. of babies nurture mm-hmm. that is a very powerful aspect not supposed to nurture your husband you nurture babies and so but if your husband was doing so many great things for you you can make dinner for him, do things for him, whatever, because you've been getting so much from him, you naturally want to give back. That's a reciprocity. But if you're out there making money and he's out there making money, where's the reciprocity? What are you doing for me? So a little story to sort of illustrate that. And then we'll get to how women can ask for help. And we'll try to finish up on that. The I'm taking after seven years in marriage. I remember I'm taking Bonnie to dinner on a date, doing what guys are supposed to do. And I'm opening the door as we go out, but it was a double door. And I opened one door and another man walked up, tall, handsome guy, stranger. He's mysterious, but handsome, friendly. He opens the door for her. And I opened this door and her mood shifted. And she saw him. She goes, oh, thank you so much. And then we walked off. Now, why didn't I do that for my husband? Well, why didn't she do that for her husband? Because I do his laundry, so he should open the door for me. No mm-hmm. romance. See, that's called taking your partner for granted. We men take women for granted as well. Why we stop doing those romantic things. Women take men for granted by thinking you should do that because right. I do this and this. So your yeah. estrogen doesn't go up. Yeah. So where do you get your estrogen now that you're out there being a man all the time? By doing just what you had said, teaching women how to be open, how to be vulnerable. But usually when women do open up to share what they feel inside, it's the suppressed feelings of the day because they're suppressing Mm -hmm. feelings all day long because they're on their male side, pushing down their female. Things happen. Just gets pushed down. You Mm -hmm. you deal with stress in the workplace the way a man does. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything about it. Don't reveal Mm -hmm. anything. Just push it down. I'll just Mm -hmm. solve the problem. So you're on your male side, your emotional side, your estrogen is just being pushed down, down, down by suppressing. Mm -hmm. When you get home, because this is the man who loves you, there's a certain level of safety. Those feelings come up. But as Freud explained, when they come up, if they were suppressed, they don't come up regarding what bothered you. They come up directed at the person who makes you feel safe. Mm -hmm. Now, all your upset, your tension, your stress Mm -hmm. that's accumulated throughout the day. Mm -hmm. See, if there's one stressful thing, only a little stress. But 10 things happen. You don't know how much is happening. It's all getting stressed. It just comes out as something's not enough with him, not enough. For, like you're not getting enough at work, not enough respect, mm-hmm. not enough acknowledgement, not enough appreciation, not enough support, mm-hmm. not enough help. You just you do it. That's what you have to do. Mm-hmm. That's what men live in. And that's good for men because it makes testosterone. But right. for women, it makes testosterone as well and doesn't make estrogen. So you're suppressing. Yeah. So when it comes home, it comes out as a displacement on him. Mm-hmm. And so then now you have negative emotions regarding him. If you share negative emotions regarding him, as you become vulnerable, he will get defensive. Mm -hmm. If he's a black belt, now I'm a black belt, I won't get defensive because I know 
She can say anything to me and I'll ask more questions and get her to feel her emotions. And then she'll produce a lot of estrogen. And when her estrogen goes up, her stress goes down. And then she'll remember what an amazing guy I am. So I don't have to prove to her at that moment what an amazing guy I am and why I'm a good guy and why you're upset about is no big deal. (laughs) It's no big deal. But we make it a women. Sometimes they have to amplify their feelings. And particularly if a man goes, this is irrational. This is overreaction. It's not such a big deal. You're getting all upset over. I didn't turn off a light switch. What's your mm-hmm. problem? Yeah, exactly. What's your problem? You're irrational. You're making, yesterday I left my socks in front of the TV. You weren't upset. Now today you're complaining. You're listening to all these things. What's your problem? That's if men don't understand women. And granted, that doesn't feel good to her. But the flip side of it is, what can she do about it? What we should do about it is notice what these negative messages are she's giving him and don't. Mm-hmm. So he leaves the light on. So it's no big deal. But wouldn't it be nice if he would turn out the light? That would be mm-hmm. make feel special, make you feel like he hears me, makes me feel like he's there for me. Mm-hmm. How do you get him to do that? Mm-hmm. You ask and you do it in a way that works. Yeah. If you say, you forgot again. How many times do I have to remind you? That's your nagging. That's your criticism. That's your complaining. Never works. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So the flip side is you have to have something positive. What what can you do? You don't want to just stuff it. You want to feel that I have the power. I'm a can-do woman. I can get him to do stuff for me. Mm -hmm. I have wisdom. So Bonnie finally figured this out after many years. (laughs) I I thought, wow, how did she do that? I turned out the light all the time now. What happened? Well, she basically realized all that other stuff doesn't work. And she's a smart lady. So I'm making a sandwich in the kitchen. She poked her head into the kitchen. And she's smiling. Anytime a woman smiles, men feel successful. She smiled. She's John. It's kind of like we might have got a big check in the mail. It's the same tone of voice. And so she said, she goes, John, I've noticed sometimes you're turning out the light more. That's the first thing she said. So success. And she's, and I wanted to remind you how good it makes me feel. Not I want to remind you that you're still not doing it all the time. I'm reminding mm-hmm. you this, it feels so. I want to remind you how good it feels. Then she goes, it's not a big deal. Immediately say, not a big deal, man. We'll hear you say it's a big deal with all your intense emotions and dissatisfaction. He doesn't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Doesn't go in. Just lowers him down. So she said, I want to remind you how good it makes my it feel, how good it makes me feel. And it's not a big deal. Sometimes you still forget. And she didn't make eye contact and she walked out of the room. It was like a feather touch, a yeah. feather touch. And I went, wow, that was so nice. You know, that's Mm -hmm. the opposite of what she did in the past. Mm -hmm. She did it two more times. And after that, she never had to do it again. I'm turning the light all the time. I feel like it's like I'm being romantic when I turn out the light. I'm doing something that stays big when I turn out the light. But when women amplify negativity to get what they want, men Mm -hmm. will minimize so they don't get negativity. If you Mm -hmm. minimize, men will always amplify. That Mm -hmm. motivates men. It's not a big deal. And, you know, some women say, well, he had an affair. And that is a big deal. Yes, that is is a big deal. Light switches and messiness and late to dinner and all the, isn't that a big deal? But emotionally it becomes a big deal because it, and you interpret it to mean, one, he doesn't love you as much. And two, you interpret it to mean powerlessness to get what I want. Because Mm -hmm. you don't know how to ask what you want. And you do this thing that just makes it worse. And it comes out of you because you have no role models of how to ask men for more. Now, you think of the wisdom women would have learned that. They did learn that. You know how they asked for more from men? They didn't marry you until you had everything. You passed all the tests. So she never has to ask for more. (laughs) So you didn't give sex away. You gave sex away. So that whole culture says, don't give it away, women. As soon as you give sex, men are lazy. Mm. Unless he's already learned, do this, do this, do this, do this. Then I get her love. And Mm. on a biological level, then she wants to have sex with me. Mm. So as soon as you have sex with men just to please men or whatever, to try to get a man to like you, he won't commit. He's not going to have, you lose him. Mm -hmm. So, but there is a dynamic. You're dating a guy. His ego is built into, men are so, our whole ego is, can I score? Okay. Yeah. Now it used to be, can I get a woman to marry me? And then I can score. Okay. But mm-hmm. it's no longer that we destroyed that. And, and we're not going to go back to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. What you can have is I won't have sex until I've gotten everything I want. And one of the things I want and need is monogamy. I know that I'm number one in your life. You don't have to marry me for some women still who say, I want, I want to be married before I have sex. Okay. Maybe that's still too old fashioned. 
-hmm. For some, maybe it's their religion. I'm cool with whatever it is because postponing sex is so, so important Mm -hmm. uh, for a man to have the motivation to get in there. Mm -hmm. You have to realize men are desperate to have sex. And if they can't have it after a while, they go numb, which is why testosterone levels go down. Mm -hmm. Uh, A woman divorces her husband. He's lazy. He doesn't take care of himself. He's not motivated anymore. And suddenly you get a divorce. He's suddenly got a new outfit. He's going to the gym. He's working Mm -hmm. out. And his testosterone shoots up. Single men always have the highest testosterone. Now, mm-hmm. I have the highest testosterone. I'm mm-hmm. not single and I'm in love and I've grandfathered all the things because I've learned how to stay in my masculine side while I'm also so loving and so happy and so fulfilled. I work hard and I, yeah. and I don't get lost in my femininity. I don't allow anger. Now, that's not true for women. Women, if they feel angry, you need to process it. You need to talk about it. Mm-hmm. In order to produce estrogen, see, mm-hmm. women get addicted to negative emotions because expressing negative emotions makes estrogen. Yeah, it makes it, it feels good when women flock together and start bitching yeah, about their They're husbands. making estrogen, yeah. and yet it's not a productive use of making estrogen. Like a no. man does porn, <laughs> when a man does porn, he's making testosterone. Okay, can but, we just, you know. And afterwards, it goes down. Yeah, okay. So like this, this actually came up yesterday for me. Um, I had a young couple come in, they weren't married, but the, she was with child with their child and uh, they had been together two years. And this is one of the first times that, okay, like he was 35 or something and she was younger, 27, but it's one of the first times that one of my clients sort of confronted me on this. And um, because I said to him, there's a couple things, her number one complaint about him, why she came in and why she had so much resentment towards him and 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 obviously very angry was that she said she has asked him over and over not to be messaging past like sexual like like relationships, uh, women that he's had sexual relationships like like you know first of all her boundary was after 12 a.m. don't I, I don't want to see that you've been messaging, you know, past relationships, with women like this. And then I'm, but then like, and she, I think she thought that was great after saying after 12 AM and I'm like, okay, no, see my view on it is like, I don't think like once you're in a, in a committed relationship like this, you, you really, I don't feel the need to have a male, like for myself, like this has never been a concern between my husband and I. like, for him to have many female contacts on his phone and messaging them or me to have like, to me, there's no need for that. Like, I mean, I unless it's a friend group, unless there's a group of friends. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's how I feel. And and then the other thing I said, Absolutely right. What you're saying is wisdom is purity. Women need okay. to be validated men. and men need to be explained. You have to take a man to the side, not when she's there, because if she, see, mm-hmm. I do most of my counseling, men and women separate. Yeah. If, if I'm yeah. trying to convey something to a man, so he will change his belief system. If his wife is there, he's got to defend it because she's there. And if yeah. I'm wrong and his wife is yeah. there, they're going to see, see, you're right. wrong. and that people don't want to do. I mean, they don't no. want to the day that the side effect that, that vaccinations cause side effects. Okay. <laughs> Because you recommended to someone and then they died and the family said, you recommended it. Well, it wasn't it wasn't the vaccine that did that. We now know historically that this has been proven. Some people die right after the vaccine, but they don't want to say the vaccine did it. Now they are, but they don't mm-hmm. want to mar- market it big time. And mm-hmm. God, imagine this is so many doctors told mothers you should take this shot before preg- at pregnancy. And now the statistics are so many children died and so many miscarriages. Miscarriages are off the chart now. Uh, because of back for vaccinated people. This is, I, I'm not conspiracy. I'm just talking CDC. Is now yeah, 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 I know, okay. I know. So, yeah. uh, I, no, I, 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 I apologize for going so off the track, but it's actually not off the track. Is it men or women get extremely defensive? And when you take a man yes. off the side, this is what you need to say to him. Mm-hmm. You say, now, how's your sex life with your wife? Okay, yeah. okay, it's great. It's wonderful. I said, okay, would you like it to be better? Mm-hmm. Mm. And would you like, would you, do you sometimes find your wife is not happy? Mm-hmm. Would you like her to be mm-hmm. happier? Well, mm-hmm. what men need, what women need to be happy, they're very different. You see, mm-hmm. for men, sex raises testosterone and that feels good. 
Mm-hmm. In many ways to raise testosterone. Some are good for you, some are not. You can take mm-hmm. cocaine and it will temporarily raise your testosterone. Mm-hmm. It raises dopamine. A little bit of science for men. Men like science. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this mm-hmm. is your biology. Mm-hmm. And when you're feeling good, your testosterone goes up. Now, what can make your testosterone go up? When your wife is not complaining, when your wife is happy with you, mm-hmm. when your wife is uh, enjoying you, when your wife mm-hmm. really enjoys sex, and oh, when she really wants sex more than you do and you like having it. Boy, this mm-hmm. is amazing. Well, that all will occur in her if your testosterone levels are high, because when your Mm -hmm. testosterone levels are high in response to her, Mm -hmm. see, if if my wife walks into the room and if she comes in and she's happy to see me, then my testosterone will go up in response to her. Mm -hmm. If, And then when my testosterone goes up, her estrogen will go up, which allows her to see you as her hero. So this is all very biological. You have to get so much pressure on... uh, dysfunctional behavior until you realize dysfunctional behavior, like eating sugar. Now I'm not against Mm -hmm. eating sugar in moderation. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you eat sugar, if you eat a lot of sugar, what happens is, well, a lot of bad stuff can happen. Diabetes eventually, but you have high blood Mm -hmm. sugar and you have other things and other things contribute to diabetes as well. But let's just go with the simple understanding. When children eat a lot of sugar, they don't want to eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's why we have desserts at the end of the meal. Yeah. If you have a big dessert before a meal, you're not hungry for the other food. The other food doesn't yeah. taste as good. That's because when you stimulate high dopamine, it feels great. Your testosterone goes up. Like if you're masturbating, it goes up. But afterwards, your testosterone goes back down and starts going further down. Yeah. Now, if your wife is happy to see you, your testosterone goes up. And it, and that makes her feel more safe, more support. Look, look this man is enjoying me. So now Mm -hmm. her estrogen will go higher. But if my testosterone goes up based on another woman, my wife's estrogen goes down. Right. Simple as that. So no matter whether she knows you're talking to other women or not, Mm -hmm. the fact that other women are causing your testosterone to go up higher, a little Mm -hmm. sexual titillation, a little feeling great, a little needed powerful and needed. Exactly. A little feeling needed. So Mm -hmm. suddenly your testosterone goes up but it's not based on your wife loving you or appreciating Mm -hmm. you. It's based on somebody else. And there's a somewhat of a sexual nature to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X, you know, you had a sexual connection. And so it's always there on some level. Mm -hmm. What that does is that's going to threaten her. That's Mm going to keep her from feeling safe. Like Mm -hmm. you could leave her or she's not the number one. Now I know you love Mm -hmm. your wife. I know she's the most important or your girlfriend, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I know she's most important to you. Of course, that's true. Mm-hmm. But energetically, biologically, mm-hmm. some other woman is giving you a dirt boast, a dose of testosterone, a testosterone. That means she's not. So right. energetically, she's going to close down to you. And as she yeah. starts to close down, she's going to start feeling not enough, not right. enough. Her tendency to complain will be more. She won't be able to appreciate you as much. And isn't that your goal for your wife to really think you're the best and appreciate you and be wonderful? Well, if you don't talk to those women, even though yeah. it feels like you're being controlled, but let's not say it's a bad thing or you're a bad person, you're having fun, you're not, you, you don't stop loving your wife, but your wife stops feeling loved by you exactly. and biologically and yeah. biologically, it will not, her estrogen doesn't go up and that yeah. will create more trouble in your relationship, more challenges in your relationship. So it's not like, oh, my wife's insecure. So I have to give this thing up. No, energetically, I can make a decision based on my own choice. I'm not being controlled. And I'm realizing that's just not very smart if I want to have a long lasting, great sexual relationship with her. Exactly. And so like, I I know, like I need to run and so do you and um, but the same is true for porn. It's the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually more with porn. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe psychologically more for her. But biologically, when men do porn, what happens is fantasy, not even reality, spikes their testosterone. And not only does that affect his relationship with his spouse energetically, I'm no longer looking to my spouse for that connection. I got that connection there. And exactly. we, all we want is connection. The, the connection men really want most of the time is success. I want to feel powerful. I want to feel successful. And the mm-hmm. brain thinks you're successful if a female undresses in front of you. Right. No response. And of course, she's not in reality. She just wants your money. She doesn't care about you at all. You're nobody. You're a loser, actually, to come on the site. 
but but your brain is fooled thinking I'm getting love, but you're not getting love. And so what happens is your testosterone crashes down, your self-esteem goes down, and you feel like shit. And most yeah. men do afterwards. And now yeah. we have this big rationalization in our culture, which is no, masturbation is good. The only reason you feel shame is because society says it's not a good thing. No, yeah. society says it's not a good thing because it's not a good thing. Exactly. And, and you should feel shame and then you should forgive yourself and stop doing the behavior that causes you to feel shame because it's really an awful feeling. I used to smoke as a teenager. That was hard to give up. And smoking addiction is considered to be one of the hardest. Mm -hmm. I gave it up by being ashamed because I joined a spiritual group and only the enlightened person. <laughs> that was an unenlightened thing to do. So I don't want to be low level person. I want to be included. And the group mm -hmm. is all saying, don't smoke. And if you smoke, you're, you should feel, I would feel the shame. Yeah. And so basically <laughs> it was the shame that motivated me to do something good for me because what was good for me was to be included by my group. And yeah. so, so shame is really important. So we're changing the whole thing, which is, oh, you don't need to feel shame for your cheating on your wife. You don't need to feel bad because you're a liar. You don't need to be bad because you're masturbating. You don't need to feel bad because you're not committed to your partner. You don't need to feel bad because you got angry with your partner and scared her. You don't need to feel bad about that. It's just normal. Yes. Okay. It's normal dysfunction. And now you should feel some shame, which is apology. I want to make it up. And now I want to be better. Shame yeah. motivates motivates changes in behavior. If you don't feel yeah. shame, what we're trying to do today in our society is normalize every deterrent dysfunctional <laughs> behavior. It's all normal, uh, it's all natural. Yeah. I know. It's, it's not your it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's blah blah blah. You know, it's just I mean that it's normal. It's normal. Yeah, it's normalized. It's, it's yeah. normalized. What we're doing is normalizing non-marriage. It used to be our yeah. goal in life is get married, have kids, have a family, have good children. As a woman gets beyond the children needing her, she has a part-time job. She doesn't care that much about it. She's got a right. husband who makes more money than her. And always when the husband makes more money than the woman, that's already makes the relationship easier. Yeah. He feels I depend on him for the extra as opposed to I yeah. can do it all myself. You can yeah. overcome these things by doing what you recommended today. Learn to be vulnerable. Only two minutes. I'll finish it up. There's a process you can do every day or every few days when you're feeling a little stressed, go to your partner and say, I want to do the, re the, the reassurance process. I'm going to de dig down into the insecure part of me and I just want to share it. And you say, do you love me? And your job is the man doing this process. And of course, we know he loves you. But this is for the emotional part of us. Mm -hmm. He says, yes, I love you. And you say, how much do you love me? I love you so much. Are you angry with me? The other day I did this. No, honey, I'm not angry with you. Are you, are, am I the only one for you? Yes, you're the only one. Do you love me more than any other person? Yes, I love you more than any other person. Are you sure you feel comfortable with me? Yes, I feel comfortable. Do you like our relationship? You know, do you like that we did this thing? Yes, I like it very much. And this softens all these little edges inside of her because women are always thinking, is he mad at me about that? Did I do enough mm. there? Did he not do that? I don't understand. Mm. Is he ignoring me? You know, mm. it, it, uh, even though you spend time in your cave, do you still love me? Do you want to do mm. things for me? Yes, I do. And his answer to everything is yes and amplify it, amplify it. That will raise his testosterone. This is just to create polarity. I'm the can-do guy and you're the woman who depends on the can-do guy to become happier mm. and it's so powerful you practice it outside and then you do it when you're making love and mm. if you're not making love you're not making love then start making love just by being in the bed being start to undress in bed doing gentle massaging and touching and do the exercise do you like this? Do you like me? Do you love me? Do you always want to be with me? Are you happy with me? All your insecurities. See, women, you're a woman. Don't you have those insecurities? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I can't tell you how many women want to pretend to themselves and their partner that I don't. And mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. If you were to say to your husband, well, do you love me? Are you still mad at me? Of course I love you. Why are you thinking something like that? It's no big mm -hmm. deal. I'm not mad. It just turns into a lack of reassurance that you reveal it. And then you get an answer to it. Your soul just needs to hear that. Yes. Just like our soul needs to get naked and feel good together. We need to be naked vulnerably for her to be naked vulnerably. Mm -hmm. and, to be, and for men to say, yes, I love you. No, I'm not angry with you. Yes, you're, that's being very vulnerable for him. You exactly. Know? He, has to, he has to live up to what he just said. See, yeah. it motivates a man. It brings back the connection. Mm -hmm. It's something I finally discovered. And I'm having my clients do it. 
they're going, wow, this is fantastic. Now, sometimes they won't do it. So I make them do it. And then they go, doesn't it feel good? Yes, it does. But I feel uncomfortable doing it. Well, that's your resistance to receiving. So as you do it, yes. more, your partner gets into it with you. And it suddenly you really feel I can be transparent with my partner. And it becomes a huge estrogen stimulation for women to lower their stress. And then they can speak to a man and then begin the next journey, which is asking for help rather than doing everything yourself and giving big rewards. So, well, I think that was a beautiful way to end John. And I really appreciate it. And uh, you sort of leaked out your next book, which um, I think it's, you know, if, if you're just thinking about writing it now, I think I'm telling you should, because I think that's the, the whole reassurance piece. There is a beautiful way of, of reconnection. And then, you know, when you think about the, the, the term soulmate, it's really two souls becoming one. Yes. You know, and, and that's exactly what you just exactly described. Exactly what it is. It's literally when she's being vulnerable, she is my female side and I'm nurturing my female side. And when she's mm -hmm. depending upon him for that, to hear those words and, mm. and start to like it more to hear those words. And when I introduce this in my seminars, I just say, how many women like it when your husband says, I love you? Yes, mm. nice. You know, how many women say, I'm not mad at you at all. You know, I really like being, and they go, yes, I like to hear it. And then I even say, how many women like to hear it when you're making love? If your husband was, say, I love you so much. You're so mm. beautiful. They go, yes, I like to do that. So let's start doing that. But as a man, then I explain, men don't do any, they don't get their soul into something unless they're needed. So the part of you that wants to hear him say, I love you, feel behind it. I need to hear you say, I love you. Then I can fully open up. So do it making love. And now, because what making love is, it's, it's where women get naked and men try to make women happy. So that's the polarity. So the more you reveal your insecurity, it's not just physical anymore. It's emotional and it's mental. You're bringing whole being into the lovemaking process and you truly make more love because her estrogen goes higher. His testosterone goes higher in response. You anchor in that experience and you can bring it back just by what I mentioned. Just start with the cuddling and the verbal and then start doing nice massages. As a woman's estrogen starts to go up, she will become aroused. And was, mm -hmm. this is what happens. Yeah, this is what happens. It's that easy, folks. You heard it. Okay, so thanks so much, John. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, you have a great rest of your day and everyone else, we'll see you next week. Thanks once again for joining me on another great episode of I Think I Can podcast. If you liked it, please subscribe below so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And until next week, treat each day like it was your last, because each new day is a privilege that we shan't take for granted. Cheers and have a great week. Bye-bye.